Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. We're taking a look at WordPress and creating a free website in WordPress. We're using WordPress.com. Um, in other videos and other content, I talk about self-hosting and WordPress.org. But once again, this is the free version of WordPress. In the earlier video, we looked at just setting up a basic website. In that video, I created this site here, playexplortech.wordpress.com. Um, and so you can go back and review that to see the strategies and the habits and the tactics I use to get this up and running. In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up a theme. Um, themes are one of the, the elements of WordPress that I love. Um, I think that there's a number of reasons why I like WordPress, but themes is one of the first real standout reasons. A theme is a way that you can change the look, the feel, uh, the interactivity of your website pretty quickly. So it's important to figure out what theme best suits you and best suits your style. So I'm going to show you some of the strategies I use and I typically will start off uh, as soon as I build up a new WordPress site I'll first start looking at the theme to get an idea for how I like this website to lay out. Uh, the theme is going to, as I said, change the, the look and the feel and the interactivity of the site. So I think it's important to start to think about that right away. I usually go into the selection of a, of a website or the, the selection of a theme to think about what works best and sort of what I see, uh, what possible themes or uses I see for my site. So I go into it with a general idea of what I might like and then go see what themes are out there. So this theme, this website that we set up uh, the other day in the previous video, uh, it's just one of the starter themes. It's also important to note that, you know, this is the main website or URL for my, uh, this is the main uh, address for my website, but this is the public side. There's also the private side behind the scenes that I use to edit. So if I'm here, I'm already logged into WordPress.com. I can click on my sites and I'll come to this page here. When I'm picking a theme, really when I'm doing any work on my website, I'll have one tab open to the behind the scenes so I can edit and make changes, and then a secondary tab open to the front of the website. That way if I make any changes, I can basically refresh the page to see what the changes look like. So if I'm looking at a, a setting up a new website and setting up a theme, one of the first things I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll click on themes, I'll see what I'm currently using. Right now I'm using 2016. Every year WordPress comes out with a new theme. They are designated by the year in which they were created. The new themes are meant as a way to highlight some of the new additions to WordPress and the new functionality of WordPress. Uh, the, the yearly themes are all excellent. They are a good starting point. You might choose to stick to the yearly themes that they provide, and I don't think that you will find uh, any real negatives to it. If you do start looking for themes, which I think that you should, you'll quickly find out that there are a variety of ways to describe the different themes. You'll also come across the, you know, that there's some free and there's also paid themes. So as I'm scrolling through, and this is still in WordPress, I'm scrolling through, I see that there's some for $69, $49. I see free themes, um, and then they basically vary in what they provide and how much they charge for uh, this theme. So what I could do is I could start it up and say, okay, I'm looking for a, a minimal theme. As I look for a minimal theme, I can look through and say, okay, well, here's $49, here's $69, $59. This one here is $125. So as you get started, if you want to uh, choose a paid theme as opposed to a free theme, that's obviously up to you. One of the things to keep in mind is, as you know, as we begin, a paid theme is developed and it's basically set up in a way that it makes everything look great. So one of the challenges that I've had as I've started to build my WordPress site as I look at their website, I look at their, their theme, and it looks incredible. The links look great. It's exactly what I want it to be. I look at it, and it looks very professional and thought out. And the challenge is, many times we pay for this theme, and we click, you know, purchase, and then we publish the theme, and then we expect our website to look exactly the same way. 
obviously different pictures and different content but then the challenge is we look at this and we say oh I love the way the font lays out I love the images you know and how they sort of are staggered off in this post I love the way that the author has a little identity square uh, and the challenge is once we publish it we try and use it and we realize that our website doesn't look like this at all and so the thing to keep in mind is even with a paid theme you still have a lot of work that you need to do to make it look that good and that can be problematic or challenging at times I prefer uh, to use free themes knowing that I will uh, have to tinker with it and make it uh, look the best that it possibly could be one other benefit of having a paid theme is usually with paid themes there is better service so if you have a question or a concern or you're trying to make it work and it's not working you can take a little bit of time and you can tweak it and the developer the theme or the community behind it can help support you as you figure out how to make it work in several of the paid themes that I've used in the past the, the support or the service has been uh, less than perfect um, I've had questions and the developers haven't really been there to help me uh, through the experience so you get what you pay for um, or sometimes you don't get what you pay for so that can be a, a challenge so I usually advise people to start off look at different themes that are out there try and find a free theme that might support what you want what you want to do I'd also search online and find you know what are other people saying out there what other themes are available so get a general idea of what you might like to have lately I've looked at a lot of minimalist themes to keep my text and my content very simple I've also been focused not on the images and how the page lays out but lately I've been focused on the type of text on the theme and what it looks like is it easy to read that's been my key focus as I look for different themes um, so I mean you can search online you can find a, numerous websites that are promoting various themes that are out there keep in mind a lot of these websites are sometimes you know paid for by the developers or they're advertising for developers so they might be heading you along this path to find themes that you might have to pay for um, you can obviously search for themes that might be free and there will be a lot of incredible themes that are, that are out there that are free that you can use that there is support for so one of the themes that one of the things that I suggest as we begin is start to find a theme that might work for you to figure out what themes might work one of the first things that I really do is I go in to make dummy posts and dummy pages in my WordPress site. The reason for this is the theme is going to change the look and the feel and the layout of your site. So you can't really tell what difference this will make if you only have this stock content that they start you off with. So I, I started off my WordPress site. I have one fake blog post to get me started there's an image in it I don't really have any other pages or content to speak about in this site okay so what I usually do is I advise I do this and then I also advise my students to create a little bit of content so you can see what this is going to look like to make that happen it's pretty simple I'll go to blog post and I'll say dummy post one and I'll add some text this is dummy post one And we'll talk more about posts and pages in upcoming videos. The other thing to keep in mind is as you add posts and pages, posts and pages will come with a featured image. This is an image that's sometimes at the top or the uh, main image for a page. There's also images that they'll load within the page. So I can see this puts it up at the top. I'm going to hit publish. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to add another post. So I'm here at blog posts. And I'm going to say dummy post two. I'm going to add another featured image here. I'm going to publish this. And once again, I'm just adding two or three posts to this site so that I can see how the posts stack over time. So if I have blog posts on this, 
I click on blog post, I can see a dummy post two, dummy post one, I have first blog post. So these are three basic posts that are in there to give me an idea of what the content looks like. One other thing I want to do while I'm here is I'll add a third. Because I want to see not, I, I've added posts with the featured image, but I don't know what a post will look like with an image in the body of the post. And we'll talk more about this in upcoming videos. So I'm going to not include a featured image, but what I will do is I'll add an image to the middle of the page. Actually, I'll just use some of this content I uploaded earlier. So I added this picture of bracelets to dummy post three. I don't have a featured image. I'm going to hit publish. Now I'm going to go back. So I have four dummy posts that are in there. I'm going to go to my pages. When I go to pages, I can see I have the main blog post page. I have an about page, the contact page. I'm going to add one more page and this is going to be a dummy page. I'm going to add a featured image to this. And say this is the dummy page. And publish. Now if I go back to my main website, click on the site title, I can see an overview. <coughs> Excuse me. I can see an overview of the page. This is my first blog post, scroll down. This is dummy post three. There's that image, this is dummy post two. So you can see that depending on, this is the featured image for this page, for this post, and then this is the image in text. If I click on the post itself, I can see how the post will lay out. I can see there's nothing up top. They add the image in the middle of the post. Looks good, no real challenges that I see here. I can, I don't see my pages. I can go back and find the page to see what it will look like, but for right now, I'm not that concerned about it. So I added a couple dummy posts, a couple dummy pages. And once again, the main reason is I want to see how things shake out as I change the theme. So this is still the stock theme. I have home about contact. I don't see that dummy page that I created. That's fine. I'm not concerned about it right now. I can see that when I load the main URL, the main address for my site, it's going to stack my blog posts here. And the blog posts, for the most part, look good. You know, they're very simple. I had the featured image here up top. I The text looks pretty good. Um, nothing really is concerning to me as I look at the main site. So now that I have dummy posts and a couple pages in there, what I will do is I'll go into the theme section and I'll play with different themes. So I can go in and let me look at a couple free themes that are out there. I'm going to click on info for this apostrophe. Say, okay, well, this looks pretty good. Clean, no nonsense. I like this. I'm going to click on activate this. And I'll say, thanks for choosing. Awesome. Visit site. So I can go learn more about the, the site itself, about what my site looks like. So I'll go back behind the scenes. Go back to all themes. So if I click on themes, it tells me that I've already activated the apostrophe to theme in my website. So if I go to my main site, now keep in mind I have that second tab open, and this is my site. If I refresh this, here's my original theme. I haven't changed any of the other settings at all. If I refresh this, it's going to load the new theme. So now I can see, without changing anything else, it immediately changes a lot of the different elements of my site. So now I have the pages are listed up here. It's automatically adding pages. We can change this and we will change this. I can see my posts are stacked. My posts now are these little images with the, the link underneath. I can see there's, there's widgets over here. So it shifts around a lot of the content on the page. I can drill down and look at an individual post. 
So the text here looks pretty good. It looks readable. I like the grayed out uh, title. I can see how the image loads. But I usually don't, and you usually will not, stick with the first theme that you select. Um, I can keep looking through, and I can find another one. I like this intergalactic. I will activate this, and I'll go back to my themes. Now, once again, I can see once I click on themes, it says current theme intergalactic 2. We can go in and customize. We will do that at a later date. For right now, I go back to my website, refresh it, and I can see once again, it has totally changed the layout of my website. So if I click on the main site title, I have a giant title for my whole website up top, and then the individual posts are in between. Okay. I want to click down into a post to see what this looks like. So I can see now for this one, the featured image is up top behind the text, uh, behind the title. And then down below, I didn't add any images to this post. So I can see the text here. But if I go back, let's look at one of the posts that I, so this one here, I don't have a featured image. So it pulled that image up top and made it the featured image. And then it still has it below. So I'm assuming if I added a featured image, it'd add that here, and then I can add images underneath, okay? So once again, we're looking at themes, or we're looking at themes in WordPress.com in the free version of WordPress. I believe that you should take the time to go in, add a couple dummy posts, add a couple dummy pages, add fake content to your site so you can see what it will look like as you change the the different themes. As you change themes and you look through, you figure out what works best for you. After changing around and finding different themes, you can obviously go back and delete some of the themes that you've used in the past. Um, that's not a big deal. If you add paid themes, uh, it's going to be problematic for you to get your money back at a later date. That's why I suggest go through and find a bunch of free themes that you might like and you can tweak. When you're done this, you can delete the themes that you have not used in the past. The other thing that you can do is we can go in and those dummy posts and pages that we created, we can easily just delete them. So I once I once I know what theme I want, once I'm happy with the theme, usually it's going to take a while, maybe a couple weeks to figure out what theme works best for you. So I, I typically will not delete the earlier themes that I've installed and I've tested out. Uh, I'll keep a little note tab or, or another uh, document or a notebook and I list out the different themes and the websites or bookmark them so I know where they are so I don't lose them. And once you settle on the theme that you're really going to use, and once again this takes a little bit of time, once you know the theme that you want to use, stick with the theme. In the next video we'll look at customizing it and really setting up the site. But then also as I was saying, we can go in and we can delete all of that dummy content. So the dummy content was just a placeholder, a way to hold things to see what it'll look like later. I can go in and I can hit trash and I can get rid of all that dummy content that we added in. Okay, so once again, we added dummy posts and dummy pages. They were just placeholders to see what the website would look like as we change themes. Once we know what theme we want, which will take some time, once we know what we want, then we go in and we start customizing it and making the set our own. And then we can ultimately delete the dummy posts and the dummy pages and start to really build up this website. So once again, that's WordPress and WordPress.com. We're taking a look at what different themes do to our site um, and how to start originally, you know, how to start thinking about what themes we might like to have. Now that we have a theme that we like and a theme that we're going to use, in the next video, we're going to go in and start to look at how we customize the website and make the site the way, operate the way that we want it to.